Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anicia Antoine. This edition's top stories. St. Lucians have received more than $36 million from the NIC's Economic Relief Program. St. Lucia is rated number one in the Caribbean for the national COVID-19 response. And the Ministry of Education presses on with replacing the common entrance examination. St. Lucians are continuing to benefit from the Economic Relief Program administered by the National Insurance Corporation, NIC. The program provides financial support to the thousands of NIC contributors who lost their jobs due to the COVID-19 pandemic. To date, the NIC has paid out $36.2 million to 15,805 contributors. The Economic Relief Program provides payment of a monthly sum equivalent to 50% of the insurable earnings of an affected insured person subject to a minimum of $500 and a maximum of $1,500. To date, the average monthly payout is $908. Initially making payouts for April, May and June 2020, the NIC extended the Economic Relief Program for three more months, considering the ongoing adverse impact of COVID-19 on the business sector, including the hotel sector, which employs a significant number of its contributors. The National Insurance Corporation has issued a call to employers to update their portal information, given that hundreds of St. Lucians are now returning to work following the reopening of economic activity. Head of Group Internal Audit at the NIC, Suan Chalry Payne, explains. The process starts by the employer informing NIC that those individuals that they would have uploaded for have since returned to work or their layoff period has ended. Those persons would be paid up to the time they were laid off. In cases where the period straddles, so for example, they got their return to work mid-month, so say mid-August, maybe they just returned to work mid-August, they would be processed up to August, pending information from the employer as to how much they would have been earning for the month of August, and that would be seen as the, the financial benefit that they would have gotten and would be treated as normal up to August. September, they would not be entitled to an economic relief because they would have re returned to full employment. McNaughton McLean, communications manager at the NIC, says the corporation remains committed to see the economic relief program through to its scheduled end on the 30th of September 2020, however expects the number of beneficiaries to reduce as more businesses resume operations. We do anticipate with the reopening of the economy that we will see um, a reduction perhaps in the number of um, individual applicants receiving the payout. Uh, we don't anticipate it will be a, a huge number. You indicated 1,000, or just over 1,400 or so mm -hmm. from the hotel sector. Um, that's in comparison to perhaps um, 13, 14,000 employees that are employed in that sector. So um, while we, we will continue to make the payouts um, to the qualifying applicants, we do anticipate with uh, the reopening of the economy that we will see um, some reduction in the number of persons actually receiving payouts from perhaps July up until September. The Economic Relief Program forms part of the government's social stabilization plan in response to the COVID-induced economic crisis. As of August 14th, St. Lucia was rated number one in the Caribbean for the national COVID-19 response. In a comparative data analysis of confirmed COVID-19 cases per 10,000 population in the Caribbean, St. Lucia had a rating of 1.4. The island has registered a 100% recovery of the 25 positive cases of COVID-19. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Mary Isaac, says this achievement is owed in large measure to the cooperation of citizens. This is not to say that we are out of the woods. As you know, there is still no vaccine for COVID. And since our borders are open, especially to the US and the UK, we have to continue to be very vigilant in order for us to maintain these ratings and in order for us to continue to contain the virus in St. Lucia. 
Senator Isaac says while the island's borders are open to international travel, including countries considered hotspots, illegal travel from neighboring islands can compromise the fight against the pandemic. This is one of the greatest threats to us right now. People sneaking into the country without being tested, without a COVID test, and who we are not aware come in and they're amongst our people here. And of course, as you can see, we have people who are not respecting the protocols. They are having big parties. They are having large congregations of people, people who are not wearing their mask. And these are the people who are putting our country at risk of reintroducing COVID amongst us. I need to caution those people, as well as the people who encourage them to come in and hide themselves amongst us. I am appealing to the public, to our people, who have been the greatest part in terms of our accomplishments so far. I am appealing to them. If you know of any such person, you need to report the person to the authorities. Health Minister, Senator Mary Isaac. Training on the implementation of the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA, led by the Caribbean Examination Council, CXC, has come to a fruitful conclusion. However, the Ministry of Education has been pressing on with the groundwork. All eight school districts will be carrying out further training on the internal components of implementing the CPEA. We hear more in this report. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development is confident that it has developed a comprehensive strategy for the implementation of the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, the CPEA, which replaces the Common Entrance Examination this September. Officials believe that the CPEA will better afford all students a more rounded education experience, as well as enhance access and equitability in education. The Ministry has held a number of fact-finding missions in order to establish best practices. Education Officer for Assessment in the Ministry, Patterson Abraham, speaks under consultations with counterparts in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We had discussions on what were the experiences when they first implemented the CPA program, what were some of the challenges that they experienced, and some of the ways that they went about to battle those challenges and so that has helped us to um, create our own template as to how we see the best fit to implement this program come September in our schools. The ministry has created a system of support for each of the eight school districts. An officer has been assigned to work alongside education officers, curriculum officers, numeracy and literacy officers, principals and teachers. Training is also being provided to address identified areas of deficiency. Some of these areas are the development of table of specifications um, when it comes to the development of tests. And so what we have planned to do is to carry out additional training with those teachers, with our principals, with our education officers, so that the monitoring is very effective and that the successful implementation of the program would be something that we all can look forward to come September of this year. The challenges presented by COVID-19, Mr. Abraham says, have been factored into the implementation plan. Many persons uh, may feel that it, it may be a challenge, but we are also taking in co into consideration the changes in the school day as well as, as the number of days that students attend school. Um, we are also taking this into consideration in our implementation plan. So I think um, so far what we have done and the structures that we have put in place would definitely address those shortcomings and see a great success in the implementation. Given the groundwork that has taken place and the collaboration between the Ministry of Education and partner agencies like CAMDO, Mr. Abraham says St. Lucia is well on the way to a successful implementation of the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment Program. 
from the Government Information Service. Lisa Joseph reporting. In an effort to aid in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, the Republic of China Taiwan has donated a total of 10,000 surgical masks to St. Lucia's judicial workers, including frontline policemen and firefighters. The Ambassador of the Republic of China Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, recognized the important role frontline workers play in keeping the country safe. The Ambassador explained that the donations form part of Taiwan's commitment to assisting the people of St. Lucia. For the past few months, the world has suffered from COVID-19. I admire Honorable Prime Minister Alan Shastny's leadership and efforts of the people of St. Lucia during these challenging times. St. Lucia has reported a 100% recovery rate with zero COVID-19 related deaths. What an accomplishment. <laughs> St. Lucia has been one of the closest diplomatic allies of Taiwan and has always been supporting Taiwan's participation in international organizations such as uh, UN, uh, the World Health Organization. And it is only nature that Taiwan stands by St. Lucia, especially at a recovery time like this. The Minister for Home Affairs and National Security, Senator Honorable Herman Guild Francis, expressed gratitude to the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for their continuous support. I want to say that um, this is not the first donation that Taiwan has given to St. Lucia. Taiwan continues to be a very, very, very important and good friend to St. Lucia. And, and so on behalf of the people and government of St. Lucia, we want to continue, we want to thank you for your continued support to assist in our country, not only in these um, medical uh, um, equipment, but you have done human service for us when it comes to agriculture, education, and other areas, including sports. So again, I don't want to take too long. I just want to thank you very much for inviting us to this ceremony and to thank you for the donation of this face mask, which will go a long way in assisting our frontline officers in dealing um, safely with this pandemic. Attorney General of St. Lucia, Stephen Julian, was on hand to receive the donation on behalf of judicial workers. St. Lucia sees Taiwan as a true friend and um, this donation is a demonstration of it because as far as I'm aware, we are receiving having not even asked. So you've seen a need, you have appreciated the work done by our frontline workers and um, with your sterling record of in, where it pertains to COVID-19 and your response, you're a world leader in that area and with our own admirable efforts, we think we would only be strengthened in keeping St. Lucia on the right path, protecting our nationals, protecting those who, who leave home every day and go and serve us to fight the scourge of COVID-19. So we're very appreciative of it. The handing over ceremony of the surgical face masks took place on Friday, August 14th, 2020. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with NTN Novello Creole. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes, or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19, and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Reduce your farm labor to only essential workers. Ensure regular hand washing with soap and water, or use 60% to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water are available. Clean all work surfaces and farm tools such as cutlasses, forks and sprayers with a 10% bleach solution. Ensure that toilets are cleaned thoroughly after each use and sanitized daily. Prohibit visitors to the farms. Limit contact among farm workers and promote social distances, ensuring six feet between each worker. And promote a no handshaking or unnecessary touch policy. 
more than ever before. Your important role as the gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Creole. Monsieur Ta, Anissio, Monsieur Madame de Patmark in West Coast Ability, Pour information en gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS et Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, qu'a posé ton nouvelle à Creole, posé ton Primus Hutchinson. Un point pour rapport qui j'ai sorti à ce divers Session Media PIA concerne un agreement entre le même cabinet gouvernement et la compagnie Cabot, département qui a adressé la situation de développement théorique et habitation pour la construction de projets qui résident business économique et pour divers degrés de construction, prend l'occasion pour expliquer pour le public là vraiment mon situation qui a existé. Le département a déclaré qu'il y a aussi un appel à Cabot en l'année 2019. Pour un agrandissement terrain qui est tombé en bas agrément qui est déjà ni côté à présent qui est trouvé à sous terre réserve. Le département explique que quatre agréments nouveaux pour 99 l'année à sous propriété réserve. En parmi eux, c'est Bord la Mer, Connecticut, Secret Beach. En parmi l'autre propriété, c'est agrément de terrain réserve qui est branché et puis Beach Casaba qui est servi pour couvrir le câble de service utilité. Selon le rapport du département Sala, il a fait un assessment à appel là et que les, les ministres du cabinet de gouvernement ont vu ces recommandations là pour considérer le cabinet de retourner ces recommandations là, virer pour le département pour te régler et que c'était fait une meilleure présentation. Les recommandations ont été faites en considération pour qu'on trouve un agrément pour loger à la société qui a été alloué en mois de juillet 2020. Le cabinet a approuvé un agrément pour qu'il loué terrain propriété réserve pour 75 l'année à sous condition que le département a été établi et approuvé par le cabinet de gouvernement. Le département a fait public la noter que l'agrément nouveau ça là pas qu'à toucher pièces ces places là qui les publics a servi avec pièces tout bonnement. C'est Beach Con, donc qui Secret Casaba avec les autres parce que toutes ces bords de la messe là Toujours ni en l'eau publique, j'ai un public cette ici qui a servi pour bien, pour tenir un pique-nique, pour, euh, pour exercice, pour pêcher, pour conduire cheval. La nuit, place côté de mon cas pour un restaurant, à parmi les restaurants Marjorie. Alors, je vais faire cette ici, ils savent que toutes ces bitches, au lieu de pour pêcher ça là, qui est resté pour le public la servi. Premier ministre, c'est ici, honorable Alain Chasne, dit qu'il y a une discussion à sa télévision CNBC l'Amérique, applaudi et félicité en façon qui vous joue quand il a adressé la maladie corona et façon pour virer ouvert l'industrie touristique pour les étrangers virer voyager encore. Premier ministre Chasne aussi parlé de ce que c'est ici pour ménager la mauvaise maladie. Le Premier ministre Chasne parlé de manière où il joue quand il a Adresser cette situation, c'est tellement vite et que c'est des marches-là que le gouvernement Japon pour faire assurer que les gens qui ont visité devaient tester avant et que les gymnases qui ont formé et puis l'industrie touristique pour régler et contrôler les maladies pour passer à Le Premier ministre Chasse dit qu'il a établi bien effectivement pour balancer la façon qui a ouvert la porte pour les étrangers qui ont voyager encore et aussi pour les citoyens qui était l'autre pays qui partait sa retourne en pays là. On a premier ministre Chasne aussi, qui est toujours commandé pour ces avions embrasser plus de responsabilité pour contrôler les maladies. Devant un rapport à ce papier nouvel à New York Times, le premier ministre là a fait appel pour ces avions poussés pour le développement et implémentation, test pour tous les passagers. Devant discussion à ce CNBC, 
Premier ministre Chassene expliqué que quand il y a eu la chaîne de discussion, et puis c'est l'industrie avion pour adresser la situation de ça là parce que ça a sauvé, sauvé un pile de problèmes pour tout le monde. Le Premier ministre Chassene a eu la chaîne de discussion sur NBC à mercredi, le 12 août, et aussi le 7 août. Il y a une discussion et puis un établissement média des affaires financières côté il cause et puis il concerne ces façons. C'est aussi prend action. C'est tellement vite contre Corona et action pour vieux ouvert par elle. Premier ministre honorable Alain Chastney, j'ai parlé autant concerné la situation malade de Corona et des gros pèse économiques associés à ce pays caribla. Présentement, c'est aussi 100% libre de maladie Corona. La police a construit la ville qui a continué le programme des entraînements pour placer yo en position pour assister le public la première. La semaine passée, ces policiers ont suivi l'entraînement pour apprendre la manière de conduire un exercice pour fouiller et bien chercher pour divers articles de crime, la manière pour adresser les trois qui assemblés à ce yo pour agir et puis les yo ni yon prisonniers fermés, doit yon prisonniers et pour écrire tiquer des diverses offenses. Monsieur Frost Chico, hors de l'organisation pour le site ici, a facilité et ça là. Avant ça, ces policiers ont suivi trois jours et à ce manière pour communiquer effectivement. Ça a été fait en collaboration avec le ministre des Affaires Justice et le bureau directeur des Affaires Persécution Publique. Monsieur Limé, pour Villecastri, Peterson Francis, a déclaré que c'est étonnement ça là, ni pour continuer, pour placer ces policiers là en une première position de développement et pour plus capable pour agir et puis dégager du monde travail là. L'immeuble français a remarqué que à ces situations, dégager crime en pays est très nécessaire. Pour continuer, c'est étonnement ça là, pour faire ces policiers là plus préparés et placer en une position pour adresser ces situations ça la première. Pour ces ça là, comme une représentative commune, est très critique. Pour ces policiers-là, en ville, comme cette casserie, pour recevoir ces étonnements là pour faire plus au courant et plus responsabilité, et pour faire comprendre le travail là très critique. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trois nouvelles là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder la barrière d'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore citer quoi ça fait la vie, mais après cette autre nouvelle, à quoi il y a Je vous remercie pour cette autre émission. Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Alicia Antoine.